Hi there. Dave here with the first video about our game programming course. I'm going to try to follow the, the classes that were actually taught and so that the videos are support for those classes. And so we started out by going to the website. There's the website. It's blizzardfx.com forward slash Dave. And then we proceeded to take a look at these different links. There are five links. And the first one that we went to was our crafty game engine. Now, a game engine is some code that's already written that does a bunch of stuff that any game is going to want to do. And we'll get into the details as we go. And when we go to this site, it's an extremely useful site. It's got a sample of a piece of code right here, here which we're going to look at. We're going to take a look at it in this video a little bit later on. And it's got uh, some getting started information, pretty good. And it's got the API, which is extremely important. In fact, I'm going to open it in a new tab all by itself because it defines everything that uh, you need to know about the existing games and therefore how to build your own games. It contains information about everything, stuff that's not used in the game examples that we have, etc. So that's useful. The forum contains information from that people have posted about problems. So if you're having a problem, you want to look at the forum, see if somebody's posted something there. Uh, components lists all of the different components that the crafty game engine contains. A component is a piece of code that does something um, that you need to have done. It's a way of organizing. It's a way of putting code together that has to do with itself. For instance, one of the components is something we call a four-way. A four-way component uh, is a component that takes the up key and the down key and the left key and the right key and Ooh. considers them a unit such as that when you hit one of the buttons it delivers you whatever button was hit you don't have to go and ask all the buttons and do all kinds of complicated stuff it makes it so that it takes what you could do yourself in JavaScript and writes code that makes it easier for you to use and that's what a component is. So, on the download, you can actually download Crafty, or you can just uh, go to the page that it indicates on the code. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So, you can download it there. Look at these components. There's all kinds of components. We'll show you in a few minutes where you specify the use of these components because when you build your game elements, you can use these components. We'll come back to this. Looking back, we have the play examples. Uh, yeah, we could take a look at that real quickly. The play examples allows us to play the game. By the way, if this was named index.html instead of androids.html, the game would automatically fire and you would not see anything else in this folder. The game would just fire. This is just one of the rules that browsers agree about. The rule again is that if there is a folder, if there is a folder and inside that folder there is something called index.html, it will fire that right off the bat, no questions asked. Now, we also have another folder called download, download examples. So if we open this folder, we see that it contains the zip file for, for all of the examples. So inside of that zip file are exactly what you are looking at here. So inside of asteroids.zip is asteroids.html, asteroids.dot 
Node.js and the image files. And we'll talk about all that at some point. So the videos uh, are just the videos. You're looking at one now. And the last thing we want to take a look at is the source code editor. That's caret. So if we open this link up, it takes us over to the Chrome store. Caret is a, uh, a product that runs on Chrome. It will run on any, it'll run on Foxfire also. Excuse me, it won't run on Foxfire. It is a Chrome-based tool. So it uses Chrome. You can see that when you bring it up, it looks just like a browser window because that's exactly what it is. It's a Chrome browser window that is running locally to edit stuff. And you can run Carrot on your Chromebook. You can run it on a Mac. You can run it on Windows. It doesn't matter. It will run on any of those things. Once again, it's just basically a local version of the Chrome browser that's got all the stuff that you don't need taken out. So when we bring it up, we can see, yep, that's what it is. It's got the browser stuff. It looks like a browser except that it's an editor. So I've brought up asteroids.html and asteroids.js. After I downloaded them and unzipped them to a folder called examples. So once again, the sequence is to, from the website, we're going to, we're going to go to the downloads. And from the download, we're going to go ahead, there's the download. And if we want the Asteroids game, then we're going to click on that download and we're going to save it. And then we're going to unzip it. And the place that I unzipped it is here. So depending upon whether you're running a Mac or a Chromebook or a Windows, your unzipping process will be a little different, but we covered that in class. So, let's go take a look at the Asteroids code. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring up Crafty here. And the first thing I'm going to look at is the HTML code. Code, well, HTML is a language. It's a markup language. It's more like an outlining tool. It's more like, you know, when you diagram sentences and you have parts of the sentence or this and then you make little breakouts for them. It's, that's pretty much what HTML is, what you're looking at. Here's the beginning of the HTML document. And once again, the document, the HTML document is what you're looking at on the web browser. So when you fire the Asteroids game, by double clicking on this HTML file is what you're looking at is described in here. It is this HTML page. Well, that doesn't make much sense, does it? Because this doesn't look like an, an Asteroids game. Well, it contains the resources that are used to create the Asteroid game that you do see. And so the HTML file defines all the resources that you have available to you. And what you have is a, a web page that's got a title of Shahila Middle School Asteroids. And it's got, it's got a standard, it takes the size of the web frame. It's got a, this canvas there that's blank, that's got nothing on it. That's the web page. This blank canvas that you can do something with now. But the other resources that you have are you have these JavaScript libraries. There's this jQuery library, there's the Crafty library, and then there's the Asteroids library. Well, the Asteroids, is, that's just the game that we wrote. The Crafty library is a set of JavaScript code. I'm going to copy, just to make a point, I'm going to copy this. 
And if you want to have it locally, all you have to do is just copy this and then in your browser, go to that place. And when you go there, for instance, we're going to go to Crafty, what we get is, there it is. There's the whole game engine. There's all of the code. And so if we do a control all, if we do a copy and we copy it and we paste it into our own version of Crafty, then we don't have to go to the web and use this Crafty. We can use the Crafty that we have locally. Any advantage to it? Nah, not really. Uh, this will run anywhere because it's just going to use the web version. Now, Crafty contains all the code that we want that's relative to gaming stuff. There's a lot of stuff that this gaming engine, it makes sense, that's why they call it a game engine. So it just contains a bunch of code that we're going to want to use. The same thing with jQuery. jQuery is... Um, a library that makes JavaScript a lot more powerful. It delivers a lot of capabilities to it. And um, so once again, to review then, the HTML is the web page. It is, it defines the web page. It is the web page. It is the web page in that it defines all of the resources that are going to be available to make what you see. It may not be exactly what you see, but it does define the resources that will be used. And so that's going to be these JavaScript libraries or this JavaScript code. Well, how does it fire? How does it know what code to fire? Well, as soon as this web page is loaded, the HTML will fire a piece of JavaScript code if it exists. And the piece of JavaScript code that's going to get fired is the code that we see back here in our example. So when we go back to, we go back to Crafty, right at the beginning, it says Windows dot onload. Oh, Windows dot. Windows is, a, excuse me, window is an object which JavaScript makes available to any JavaScript programmer who wants it. And onload is what is going to happen when the window is first loaded. And what's going to happen is that a function is going to get run. A function does something. And what that function is going to do is it's going to fire another function. And this function is a function who's got a name called init. And it's part of Crafty. It came in with us and was available to us because of this line of code right here, line 6. And if we want to see what that does, all we have to do is to go over to the uh, crafty index here and look down and still we see that method. And when we look down, 
we see the crafty object has got a method, a function called init. And if we click on this, we can see that what's passed in when we execute that init method is the width and the height and the elements that are going to be on the stage. And we can read about the definition here. Is it important that we read that? Yeah. So when we look back at our code, we can see that in fact it's not passing in anything in init. So the documentation that we just left will tell us what the default values will be. The next thing that we do is we go ahead and we make a variable. A variable is a variable is the name of some place in memory. So when we have something where we say variable player, in fact, actually, we could leave the var out. We just said player. If we set it on the left side of an equal sign, it, it's going to be a variable. Um, that's what that is. That's what we're doing. And here we're saying windows on open that variable uh, that's which is going to be what windows is going to fire is equal to this function here. And so we're making a variable by the name of player and we're setting it equal to the execution of some other function called E where we're passing in this and if we look at crafty.e in the documentation we can see how it works and we're going to talk about that in another video all i'm trying to do here is to establish that the api contains the detailed information that we need in order to understand what's going on well i've alluded to the most important part maybe of this video which is the fact that in javascript is all about objects it's all objects and what we're looking at here is an object that's being created called a player and it's being created by doing this and then once we have that player attribute that player object defined we can then go ahead and set its attributes one of those attributes one of those variables is something called attr another one is called dot color Another one is dot four way. And these are variables inside of player. And the reason that the four way variable exists is because in this guy we told it to use the four way component. And that's way too much information. But I thought I'd just pass it out there. And please know that we're going to go over it again and again. But it's the first blush, and I'll try to make the time on the video significant. So once again, this piece of code that we're looking at right here 
says that when that HTML page is loaded, whatever one is used to that this code exists in, right? Something has got to fire the code off, the JavaScript. And so this code exists. So if Windows.online equals, if that the whole thing didn't exist, then it wouldn't do anything. But if this does exist, if we do set this Windows dot online variable equal to something and so what we're setting it equal to is a function and as long as it's equal to something then it will fire this and so it's going to fire this function when that window gets loaded and what it's going to do is it's going to initialize the game engine and we know how to look up what that does exactly and then it goes ahead and it makes a player object and it's got those components and then we go ahead and set the attributes of the components that it has and the components that are available are the components that we're talking about up here and then if you want to you can add some more attributes you can add your own attributes it doesn't have to be just ones that come from components you can say you know whatever other attributes you want and then you can also make your own functions and there that's about half the course there so we'll talk about the details of this kind of stuff as well as how we make all the visuals work as we go galloping along Take care.